All right, y'all, what's happening? We are back with another episode. Now, I know what the name said originally, right? Then there was some discussions that were had amongst the crew that we felt that a name change would be best for this in particular. So, instead of it being BBC Wrestling, because CT was like, uh, hey, Fram, I don't know if I want to call myself Big Black Cock Wrestling. And I know what he meant. You know, <laughs> also, what? here's the thing are we a unit or not? That was a throw under the goddamn bus. I thought he was oh, like, no, no, Yeah, no, you no, know, no, we no, discussed, no, and then it's no, like, no, the no, CT, this type of shit that made me want to fuck Jay up. I don't know if y'all know that. Keep going, Jay. This, 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 was, this, was his, uh, this was his breaking up the shield. This is him hitting Jesus. you in the back. <laughs> yeah, that was a chair in a fucking back. Hey, listen, speaking of which, though, we have now changed the name, and I think it is unanimous that we are now calling this the Before the Bell podcast. Okay. So, yeah. all in favor, say aye. Aye. And that is official. You motherfuckers should have said it while you're listening to it or watching this. One way. I know also it looks different this week because Martin is currently in Birmingham, Alabama with his family. CT and yes. I are still in our spec spots. So, we couldn't do it collectively like we did the first episode. But we were like, yo, we got to get an episode out. And I've always been now that virtual. Huh? I said especially after last night. Yeah, like especially after last night, which we, we're gonna get out, we're gonna kick that off in a second. But let's you, before we go into what, what what the big stories are, yo, real quick, just get into it. How was you, you told us previously, Martin? But I don't know if you want to share how's your week, everything. Yeah, uh, so for, for the listeners out there, the audience, uh, so I went to Alabama this week for Thanksgiving and also my my grandmother, uh, so she did just literally like maybe less than an hour or two ago passed away. Uh, but she is the one who got me into wrestling. Uh, she she was a huge, her and my grandpa were huge WCW fans, hated Ric Flair uh, <laughs> with, with a passion. He, even even hey. when he tried to be good, they're like, nah, we don't trust him. Um <laughs> That's yeah, a real life thing, too. You don't trust that nigga in real life, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. And and you know what? Uh, according to Teddy Long, they were right to not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't blame him. Uh, you never told yeah. me they got you into wrestling. That's incredible. Yeah. When I was when I moved to Alabama, when I was uh, five, six years old, because we, we lived we lived here. Um, my mom, my mom uh, and dad got divorced when I was five. Mm. Uh, they were in Texas. We drove to Alabama. Stayed at my granny's for a couple of years, you know, it should recalibrate, get get back on the feet and all that jazz. And so they'd be watching wrestling Monday nights and I got into it from there. Dude, that's an iconic memory. And that's a bond. And oh, I love that. You just made me love your grandma even more. Shout out to yeah. your granddad. Rest in peace. Uh, I'll say this. Ric Flair definitely war he i warmed up to flair in the past decade because flair was a scoundrel bro he was a that's scoundrel a Wait, that's a bad that's bad that he just said the past decade the decade like, bro yeah. <laughs> 10 years he's a scoundrel and that, that goes to show how great of an entertainer he truly is because for him to still be able to be entertaining audiences to this day is crazy but at the same time Man, I think one of my favorite, and this is completely off topic of what we're talking about today, but one of my favorite storylines was the first edition of Raw versus SmackDown. It was Vince McMahon versus Ric Flair during yeah, that Flair, whole yeah. draft story. That was incredible. Yep. They're stealing people from each show, and yeah. oh, it was great. It was the best that had ever been done, and I don't think it's yeah. been done that uh, poignantly since. Because no. you, you've never had, you haven't had two powerful personalities to be opposites like that sense to have a Vince McMahon and a Ric yeah. Flair in power. A young Vince. Yeah. A young Vince although, and a Ric Flair in power. Go ahead. Although I, I will say between when it was uh, Bischoff and Stephanie, Stephanie, she, you know, she, she made a man out of me. She made uh, a man out of you. Uh, okay. All right. CT. Uh, how was your week? Yo, Let's Stephanie. <laughs> hey man, don't sleep. Stephanie McMahon, bro. Definitely oh, one of my, crushes man like and to meet her in person yeah. when i met her she's such a kind woman she's so incredibly sweet she's so knowledgeable and she is one of the pioneer women in the renaissance movement of uh women's wrestling truly she brought it to another level and i don't think she ever gets credit for that she is phenomenal and just gorgeous shout out to uh her face she smelled good Oh my God! What are you? What are we talking? Does she smell good? She smells like ice cream. What the fuck is going on? 
Yeah. Yeah. And shout out to Triple H for making a great decision, man. Triple H has me about uh he has me in height about uh an inch and a half, and he's solid muscle. Great guy. Would never disrespect him or his lady. <laughs> <laughs> so how was your week, man? Uh the week was incredible, man. I got the opportunity to uh do a great Thanksgiving over here. The only person that was missing was Martin, obviously, but many more to come. And uh Jay Washington was there. Also, end up getting the opportunity to go to the gym with Jay Washington to see how he gets down. And uh we we had his good time, man. <laughs> <laughs> his shoulder what game is crazy. He's yeah, in for all shoulders. shoulders. <laughs> he's gonna he gonna do this. He's gonna do this. You better be ready. He's gonna he's gonna do some shoulder stuff. You better be ready. Wait, wait, wait. Don't worry about no cardio. Do it again. 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 I mean, besides, you know, uh, Thanksgiving was was dope at your house. Thank you again for inviting me, you and your lovely Absolutely. wife, hanging with a bunch of people. Also, I've learned to hate you as a human now working out with you yeah. because the first time I worked out with him, Clayton was like, yo, all right, okay, I'm going to give you this smoke. And I'm like, you're not finna do nothing. And so because I talk shit, I brought this upon myself. I woke up the next day, my chest and forearms was in so much pain. I couldn't tell nobody, but I was like, oh, kill this nigga when I see I was trying to look like a hold of my arms like this. You know what it is? It's like, I never, I never talk a lot of trash. And ladies and gentlemen who are watching, you will come to learn this about Jay Washington. He is all talking of the trash. He just runs his mouth. So I was just like, all right, man, it's time to give this brother some gas. And uh, we had some good times, man. You are a horrible person. Uh, but no, other than that, man, been trying to get these scripts done to have some stuff ready on some on a couple projects and just been trying to stay focused uh, in the midst of, you know, it's the holiday season, but at the same time, when you work in this industry that we all work in, everything is trying to play catch up. So you don't mm -hmm. want to be caught behind in that, you know, neither here nor there, but listen, let's just go ahead and get into it, man. Last night we recorded this on Sunday because last night, Saturday was survivor series war games in Chicago. It was automatically highly, highly rumored of a potential, right? There was always speculation. I'm loving the fact that a lot of this information about the speculation, how it came to be, everything has come out. Everybody knows there was a speculation of Punk's return. You know he returned. But when you found out in the press conference with Triple H was like, hey, this shit about eight days old, bro. I don't know what y'all talking about. That's the part that got me. When Triple H was like, yeah, this is like about a week ago. I don't know. What's I know everybody was shocked to see our truth, bro. Like to see him come up with those ruffles was like, what this, I didn't even know people knew about this. This meant that for me, you know what I mean? Yo, a lot of people were talking about it. that. Our truth, that our truth return. Look, our truth did something. He gave you three returns in yes. one night. Yes. Yeah. He gave you our truth who is popular with the fans. Y'all don't care what nobody say. Yeah. Randy Orton who came out beefy. He and came back looking yeah. yoked. He said, he like, said, nobody, nobody going to say nothing about my back. No, <laughs> this back going to be strong. <laughs> exactly. Strong backward. He came back beefy. And of course, the return to CM Punk. Um, let's just talk about, before we get into the, what's your overall thoughts on first, the pay-per-view, the premium live event, excuse me, on the premium live event and Punk's return. I'll start with you, CT. Um, okay. So if we're gonna go in order, one of the matches of the night for me just was, overall, just a quick overall. We'll we'll break the matches down individually. But well, overall, 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 well, what are we talking about? If we let's just break down because overall we can't even there's too many moving parts of this pay-per-view. I'm sorry, PLE to just say uh overarching grade. You gotta talk about the business and then you give the grade. Mm. No, nah, I think you can do both. And no, you can't just that, because here's what happens after we heard everybody's like Let's just be real. When we, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this because there's some people who are like, Well, I thought it was a good show, except for this match or that match or this scenario or that scenario. There are people who will do that, so that's what I'm talking about. But that's what I'm saying. After hearing my perspective and then hearing Martin's and then hearing yours, I might be like, Oh, well, you know what? If I'm hearing all of these thoughts about the whole show. 
My I actual mean, thought about the you overall. Feel, you feel, say you feel. Say you feel, sir. Thank you. you so feel? my one of my matches, man. I'm looking at the Miz and Gunther. Ooh. To me, was supposed to be a. Uh, it was supposed to be a going to the bathroom match after we had seen what we've seen so far with the women's match, and this match delivered, bro. Miz showed you, hey man, I don't know why y'all think. I don't know why y'all think that this is about to be time for you to go to the bathroom. I got that heat for you. And he brought yeah. something different out of Gunther that we had not seen from any of his other competitors. And shout out to Gunther for being such a newer talent on the roster, but raising up to the level of this entertainment as opposed to just being a slobber knocker like he'd had with Drew McIntyre and Sheamus or he'd had with uh, Chad Gable. Like this was a different match. This was an entertainment match mixed with some fire wrestling moments. I yeah. agree with that. And they, they and they put so many moments in that match, especially uh to where you thought, oh, Miz might win. Not not only thought Miz might win, yes, but that you were rooting for Yes. Him. That yes. was the thing. You were rooting think about the last they, yeah. They, you were rooting no, for think, him heavily. Think about the last time you thought yeah, exactly. Think about the last time you wanted the Miz to win a match. Oh, well, first of all, I'm a Miz guy. So I've been wanting Miz to win since uh since he won the WWE title. I didn't think they were gonna allow him to get that off of uh drew mcintyre the way he did and they did it man and so i was so loud when he got that title but i knew something was coming because when he had that title the next brawl it didn't have his plates on it and i'm like oh they about to make him drop this title bro, yeah, was like, hey, bro we, hey, listen we're we gonna give you the credit as being champion we just ain't make no plates for you oh, i can't believe they ain't giving the plates <laughs> uh, that shit think- was crazy I think the thing with like Gunther is this traditional old school wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, slobber knocker, brawler. He is very technically sound, but he's technically sound in the big man sense, old school yeah. way. And he did have to move around a lot more mm-hmm. than he had to, because even Chad, like you say, even with Chad Gable, that was still mm-hmm. technical wrestling at its finest. This is okay. I'm a sports entertainer. Cool. All right. This is what we're gonna do. But yeah. the, I like the nods to Bret Hart, Flair, and all these old school great IC title matches that they gave in this match. There were a lot of great nods to the finish. I think it was uh, was it Piper and Hart that he tried to do. You know the, the, the figure the four, the po- yeah, in the corner, oh. the the figure four off the uh, post. All these different things they put a lot into this match to show that Miz's wrestling IQ is high as fuck. Exactly. You know, so his, you know, we we also can see his his bag of tricks is, yo, you might see him do four or five moves in a match. That ain't all what his arsenal is. And so we saw yeah. all that. So I, I, I definitely commend him on that one. Bro, The Miz, listen, man, The Miz is so underrated because The Miz is not only an incredibly athletic performer, he has this deep bag of tricks, as you said, and beyond those things, The Miz has been in this business for 20 years. So the matches that he's had, the wars, the battles, and this was all his match as a face because The Miz has entered a space similar to a Roman Reigns where he's like, all right, you could cheer, you could boo, just give me a reaction. It's not like when he got the nod from flair to start doing figure four where he was just trying to be this overly weird quasi baby face this is like hey yo i'm the miss i'm gonna do some heel shit i'm gonna do some face shit but let's see how this match goes and it was a different level intensity and he sold everything and he showed hey man i don't know what you think of me but you're not about to get injured we about to have a good match and i'm going to remind people why i deserve to be in the upper mid card if not main event you yep. just said the one big thing, and I'll go to you real quick, Martin. That one thing mm-hmm. you are not gonna get injured by me. That was one thing. Remember the whole program with him with Daniel Bryan and the yeah. talks back before he was injured himself. He was like, yep. Yo, why do you think I've been around here so long injury free? So sorry, but I yep. wanted to make sure I just included that. But no, even a piggyback on that, we look at how Daniel Bryan or now Brian Danielson in AEW how his uh, trajectory has changed so much over there, right? Like he just came, he just has the orbital injury. Uh, he had the the broken arm right before that. Like this mm. is what, th- he's he's been there for not even a full two years, right? And he's already had, he's had more injuries than I've had, I think in my entire lifetime. In the two years past. So it's like, you know, what do you, I, I, I get it, that's, that's his style, that's what he likes to do. But at the same time, it's like Miz has proven a lot by, 
by how he's handled stuff in the ring. Also, let me let me not ignore this. Martin, you're looking lean, brother. I want to give you your props. You look like you've been in that gym. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I'm down, I weighed myself down to 205. I'm ready for the cruiserweight division. Hey, 205 live. Yeah. Man, send, ready send for me division, OMR. Just, what'd you say, Jay? <laughs> Niggas ready for a division. It ain't that no more. Hey, man, like, you ready, though. No <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think also Daniel Brian Danielson being injured. And his style, yes, it goes to a lot of the things I say, and I hate to say it this way, negative about AEW, how they go balls to the wall every fucking night as opposed to saving it for the moments. Yeah. You save it for the yeah, moments. But, so yeah. You're not about to bust my eye on collision. I'm sorry. <laughs> on collision? <laughs> I'm not going to take on a, a four to the head on Rampage. What is wrong with you? I can't. <laughs> I can't deal with that kind of stuff. Uh, I want to ask real quick because before we go to the uh, War Games matches themselves, Zoe Stark versus Rhea Ripley. Yeah, were you impressed with Zoe? Do you think she proved she can be there in that level with Zoe? I, I mean, feel like she can retain and yeah. Rhea Ripley show why she is dominant because that yo that headbutt she got is way better than Drew's now. Like Come that on, headbutt man. is way better than that Glasgow kiss. <laughs> Come on, man! I feel yeah. like Zoe Stark's was dealt a, a bad, a rough end of the stick when she initially came in under Trish Stratus, right? Because when you come in as somebody's valet, it kind of takes, it takes a lot of sting out of your athletic ability because you're being forced to be a lackey. And when you're being a lackey, the audience isn't believing you as a credible uh, competitor, right? So when she got rid of that whole thing and then they start, when they threw her into the fatal five way, that's where I started to be like, oh, okay, she can wrestle, right? And then in this match, I was like, okay, she can hang. She's not ready for that championship. I honestly think Zoe Starks will be better on SmackDown than she is Raw because Raw is full of, like when you look at the Raw women's division versus the SmackDown women's division, the Raw women's division is full of these heavyweight main event women. And SmackDown is full of the, uh, yeah, yes, they are. And when you look at SmackDown, SmackDown is more of the mid card. Let's throw a whole bunch of female battle royals built women. Like all of the small girls are on SmackDown, with the exception of Bianca, and <laughs> instead of Raw. No, that's okay. That's I'm going to challenge you there. Because Please, Raw yeah, literally I, just had a battle royal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Wait, well, are you trying to literally had a battle Carter? royal. To that's how nobody's saying that they didn't have a battle royal. I, but here's what I'm saying. I want you to finish, Martin, and then I'm going to reiterate this. Go ahead. No, but I'm going to say uh, I think SmackDown has a smaller roster, uh, but they I, I get what you're saying in the terms of like a Zelina Vega or a uh, um, uh, the the damage control. But at the same time, you have to look at the Raw women's roster with a Candice LeRae, with a Zia Lee, mm -hmm. with a Caden uh, Caden and uh, Katana Chance, like that, mm -hmm. like that. Chelsea Green, like I, I get, they do have those the Piper Nivens, the Nia Jaxes, the mm -hmm. Rhea Ripley's, the Raquel uh, Rodriguez's, but I think they because it's a longer show, they just have a, a more vast array of uh, women on the Raw roster. Absolutely, go ahead, Jay. And I'm right, ready. I want go you ahead. Here, this is the Raw women's roster. Okay, you ready? Well, before so you, you give me the whole roster, because that's going against exactly what Martin just said. This is what my okay, point sorry, is. And is SmackDown. Let me. Give you, I meant the SmackDown women's roster. I don't even that's need the roster because this is what I mean. You're about to give me names. I'm just telling you from my point before we go forward. The okay. the beefier women are on Raw with even the women that you name when you're like Candice LeRae and then you got this one and this one. They're still bigger than a lot of let's just say damage control. The only women of size on SmackDown right now are Charlotte. You got Bianca. You also have Bailey, and then I'm gonna say Oscar. No B other Fab. woman is of size. B Fab is extremely small. I mean, she's What's taller. B Fab match, huh? So what's your favorite beef fat match? Nope, didn't mean to do beef that. Uh, don't, don't, I didn't say what's your favorite beef fat match. Let's not, oh, do, beef that fat. <laughs> Let's not do that. Sir. Tamina's on also on SmackDown. Oh, this one. Okay, come on. And uh, to your point earlier, Jay, uh, yes, Raw just did have the Battle Royal, but that is, I'm not talking about which show has more Battle Royals. I'm talking about the SmackDown roster doesn't have a lot of heavyweight clashes amongst women, like beefed up women. In comparison mm. to Raw, that was my only point. I got you. I just, I, I, I do think she's not ready for a title yet. I think if it, it would serve the women to have a secondary title, I've always no, said no. this. 
No, that's what the tag titles are for. No, are you sick? Yeah, the tag team titles are a waste of time. The if the tag, team, if the tag team titles are a waste of time, what is a secondary title going to no, do? No, no. I'm so glad you said that. Thank you for saying that, Martin, because you have just broached the subject that I've been very passionate about for the past three years, and that is the women's division as a whole. The women's division as a whole is full of so many incredibly talented women athletes. However, mm -hmm. just because you're a talented woman athlete does not mean that you're going to work in a team. And a lot of these, uh, a lot of the women's divisions have been forced to be teammates with another young lady just to get screen time in comparison to if you just had the raw world heavyweight championship uh i'm sorry if you had the women's world heavyweight championship and the smackdown which we should call women's universal title if you had those heavyweight titles and then you had what the equivalent to an intercontinental and a u.s title that uh -huh. would open up the that would open up the lane so much more than these tag titles that are never defended and it's forced to be shoehorned with all these tag matches that don't need to happen because the only tag teams that are legit women's tag teams that are legit on Raw yes. are uh, Katana Chance, Caden Carter. That's a uh -huh. real team. That's a real team. Yeah. That's about it. No. Everybody Indy, else is. Indy, uh, 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 uh. Indy are you, and Okay, okay Indy Candace. and Candice. Okay, the way, and, the way. And now they're they're trying to establish. Listen, Natalia no, and. No, uh, they're trying to They got matching outfits. As far as that. I know what you're saying as far as that, but I'm saying like right. actual tag teams. Like fight, you know, look, we just we joked about it and shit. Fire and Don are an actual tag team. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't really like now they're like, all right, we're gonna throw y'all together and see what happens. We're gonna throw right. Tally and Pegan Knox together to see if somebody cares. Right. You and know? that's what they do with all of these tag team uh tag team groups. In comparison, if you had the SmackDown women's United States title. Do you not think that Zelina Vega would have that on lock? If you had the Raw Women's Intercontinental Championship, do you not think that, uh, not Zoe Starks, but um, Natalia Shannon would have Baszler. held that down? Shannon, Shannon Baszler. Baszler. There are so many candidates for that, as opposed to being, and then you have these matches that you can add to pay-per-views. I'm sorry, PLEs. I'm so used to PP, uh, PPV mm -hmm. and nobody's really paying for pay-per-views. But when you have these secondary women's titles, you could tell twice as many stories instead of trying to shoehorn these raw women's championships that are not at all important and are cursed and are not interesting. And there are no true stories outside of forcing us to see a five-way tag match that's not even elimination for a possibility to face champions on a pre-show. And they so only going to give them you, eight minutes. Guarantee they only give them eight minutes. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Would you retire the tag, the yes. women's tag titles? In, okay. Yes. Before you even I finish your sentence, I want them retired and I want them stolen so they can't be brought out of retirement. I don't know. I, I'm still trying to figure out what was the point of the unification. Well, there was never a unification. They were just that's always just been no, um the titles. No, no, the, the NXT women's tag titles and the uh the, and the WWE the women's tag titles. Remember when Ronda and Shayna were tag team, they technically are the WWE unified women tag team champions because they got rid of the NXT women's tag team champions when they took the belts off fire and dawn. Those mm. are technically unified belts. You see what I'm saying? But you see how the story you don't remember it because you're like, wait, what exactly? <laughs> So let's move on real quick. Let's talk because we still got it. Also, before we get, I know we got to talk a lot about Survivor Series and everything that happened. We still got to talk about AEW Full Gear. Wait, real quick. Thing. Do you know how to do chapters? Like when you're doing this, like after you, like when this is uploaded as the full episode, chapters. Like that was a whole chapter. Us talking about women's tag team. Like you ever watch WrestleMania on YouTube? Yeah. It's like you could break it up the chapters. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah, a way yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but anyway, it's in the, uh, upload. yeah, send the upload when you do that. Okay, cool. Um, Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Let's talk. So this is a match that I, I feel like I was was unfortunate by its circumstances and should have been, I hate to say it, pushed to the pre-show. Santos Escobar versus Dragon Come on. Lee. Come on. Talk about it, Jay. Say something it's now. <laughs> Listen, I understand the hype behind Dragon Lee, but him being this last-minute replacement for Carlito to quote-unquote avenge Rey Mysterio, the story didn't work. They could have went to the pre-show. I understand. Martin, say, say something. Question. Say something, Here's Martin, because I have thoughts. How, my question is, how mad was Carlito at CM Punk to where he said, I'm not even going to show up at the whole... What? <laughs> Injure me, nigga. Injure me. Yeah. Is that what you right? think? Like, they got beef? 
<laughs> it seems everybody has beef with that motherfucker. Well, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get to that a bit. Here's the thing. My first thought is this. First of all, shout out to Carlito, friend of the show, friend of the show. Carlito, his storyline with Santos is so powerful and palpable and can be so much more that the fact that they chose to injure him a day before this, this PLE annoyed me because I wanted to see that match. I wanted to see, and of course, I still see Santos going over, but I wanted to see Carlito get his shine because Carlito is a massive heavyweight. This is not Carlito from 07. This is Carlito now who got that meat Carlito on his bones. Pause. Yeah, and, <laughs> but let me let me not to interrupt, but yeah. you have to remember, do you did you Santos needed this win? Yes. Did you want Carlito to lose on a paper on a on his first PLE back? Here's the thing. I don't want him to lose clean. No. But there's a way that he could lose dirty. There's an immediate way. First of all, if we're if I, if I can create this for you guys, Santos now being on his own has the opportunity to create the LWO in the vision that he wants, which now you can go and recruit every Latin heel and become a Wolfpack version of the LWO, while Carlito is now left to run the LWO for Rey Mysterio. So when you have this LWO, you have the... Don't you do that to me, Bart. Don't you fucking I'm do that to me, I'm man. looking at the roster like, how many other Latinos are there? There, there are friends. several. There are <laughs> several. What, 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 what is, what is Carlito? And Angel Garza, that's it, man. Nah, man, we got what Dragon is, League. What is Carlito going to do with Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro? We Did you notice? Toro. Beat them up by another question. Did you notice I didn't include those brothers' names? Now, here's what I'm saying to you. You can have an LWO split down the middle to where each of them has five Latin stars on their roster. That's what I'm saying. Hey, bro, I, I don't see five Latin five people on, this, on these rosters. Are you looking at overall? Are you looking at raw, uh, raw roster and NXT? I'm about to go to NXT now. I just did Raw and SmackDown. I'm going to NXT. Let me see. There are so many Latin wrestlers. Go ahead, brother. No, no, no. I got to step out real quick. Okay. So now when we're talking about this match, I wanted to see, and uh, Jay, yeah. So I wanted to see Carlito have this match because why have that build up if you're not just going to cancel this match? For you right. to insert Dragon Lee and for him to take the loss, I think it was too early for him to take a loss on a big stage like that. It was his first PLE. That's what I'm saying. It so it's like one. it should have been, been canceled overall. Down. It should have been scrapped. It should have been put on the, either put on a pre-show or just save it for SmackDown next week. That should have not happened at all. It didn't benefit anybody, no. and the crowd wasn't behind it. No, the crowd and wasn't know, behind it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, and I know some people say, "Well, the crowd was only waiting on Punk and blah 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 blah." The crowd got behind Miz and Gunther. The crowd got behind Zoe and Rhea. The crowd did not care about Santos Escobar and Dragon Lee. And that's what brings me to this next point that I'll, I'll establish. Actually, I'm going to wait for Martin to come back for, to establish that point. But when I look at Dragon Lee and I look at Santos, Santos is a star. I've always said this. Santos was a star before he was aligned with Rey Mysterio. Absolutely. And Santos, if Santos was three inches taller, he would be the WWE champion. These are just facts, okay? But since he's not, Santos has the showmanship. Sh Santos has the uh, the in-ring ability. He has the promo skills. And the promo skills can take uh, a wrestler that is a 6 all the way to a 12 on a scale yeah, to 10. Man. So Santos has all the tools to be the guy. The only issue is... Booking is telling a very lazy amount of storytelling when it comes to that LWO storyline. And it's so unfortunate because out of all seven members of the LWO, there are about three, of, there are about four of them that have an unsurmountable upside that they are not even tapping into because they're grouping this together as just one little throwaway story. And also, I don't think anybody, even though they're grouping it together, you always have this in any group, no matter where it is. Mm -hmm. You always have somebody who has the foresight and the wherewithal to be like, I'm going to push past what they want this to be. Oh, if I got to be this lackey in the back, I'm going to be the best lackey in the back ever to the point where you can't help but to pay attention to me. And that's not happening with Wild and Del Toro. No. Even when they were Legado de Fantasmo, they still just were, well, we just running with Santos. 
We yeah. just hear what's happening. Yeah, we're going to do what we do in the ring, which, again, no one's taking away from what them boys do in that ring. What them boys do in that square circle, they're they amazing. But when you talk about the WWE, I always tell people this. When you talk WWE, it is 70 per, 60 to 70% what you do in the ring. The other half is your character, personality, and all of that. Again, it is a rarity where you have a person, a personality that does not have a personality become champion. It's 40% what you do in that ring. And it's yeah, okay, 60% percent Let's mic right. and Let's character you. work. Yes, you're absolutely right. My apologies. 40%. 40% is your in-ring work. Yeah. 40%. Michael Cole, when Rhea Ripley came out, put her over in the greatest way you could ever put somebody over. All he had to say was, if you look up star in the dictionary, you see a picture of Rhea Ripley. That was it. And he's not wrong because he's when you look wrong. at Rhea Ripley, Rhea Ripley is the women's division. That's the reason that she couldn't be on SmackDown with a Bianca and a Charlotte because it's like, hey, look, we still need a show over here, Rhea. Well, okay, it, just well, handle us on Raw. I don't think because if you put when you put all of them together, the ones the names you just named, that's not including everybody else. No. You will literally, and I know there's going to be dudes that's going to hate to hear this. Let's hear You it. would outshine the bloodline. You put a real Ripley power, a Bianca Belair, a Charlotte Flair, and that's just those three? Let's say you bring a Bailey and a Becky over there. You talking about some of the bloodline is this big thing? L.A. Knight is going to have to make sure he stands the fuck out. That's, again, star power, right? But you get there. Some people don't want to get there. Some people don't realize I can be this great, amazing athlete. Why do you think it took so long for Ricochet to break out? Let's go back to LWO for a minute. You said something that you touched on something that I want to fully agree with, and I want to raise you this. Okay. When we talk about stables, when you talk about playing that background, when we talk about being that uh, that low man on the totem pole, but truly know how to play that role, Let's talk about one of the most underrated yet greatest factions of all time, and not just because of how we look. I'm talking about the Nation of Domination. The reason I'm bringing them up is because when you start that stable, let's talk about just the unsung heroes in that group. Farouk is the leader. Farouk got his shine, and he definitely went on for APA after being an acolyte under The Undertaker. Yeah. Farouk, yes. D'Lo Brown left that group, did not talk much at all in the Nation of Domination. Right left that group and went on to be a multi-time intercontinental and European champion actually mm -hmm. held them both at the same time. same time. Come on. You don't, you don't see that Mark Henry who never spoke, which was just the heavy in that group went on to be a world champion and cut some of the greatest promos we've ever seen. We wouldn't have mm -hmm. a hall of pain if it wasn't for him playing that background in the nation domination. Then you have the Godfather, the Godfather persona is a complete 180 from who he was in the nation of domination when you just because you're in a group and they're not giving you anything doesn't mean that it's not your responsibility and your job to shine and when you take your moments that's the perfect opportunity for you to be somebody i look at batista when he came in he was a valet for devon dudley and he was deacon, Robert, batista. deacon batista come on so i don't want to hear when we're talking about the lwo that just because you don't have an opportunity to get on a mic or all you get a chance to do is be a lackey that you can't make your presence known because I watched a brother named Damian Sandow go from being in a powerful tag team to being the Miz's stunt double and stealing the show at Royal Rumbles and WrestleManias and becoming one of the most over guys at the company compared to when he was uh, Damian Sandow that was Cody Rhodes' tag team partner that you easily forgot about. Yep. So it's not so much as, oh, they're not giving us anything. It's what are you making out of what they did give you? Yeah. When you look, there's a there's a sketch that you might have seen before on Saturday Night Live. What's up with that? Kenan Thompson. What's up with that? What's I up with that? Make me remember. <sighs> Let me tell you something. After this episode, I want you to YouTube it, and I want you to tell me how brilliant this is. It is something. It's a sketch that's just thrown together. Jason Sudeikis is there. Uh, Bill Hader. I mean, not Bill Hader. I think it is Bill Hader. That's a uh, Barry, right? Yeah, yeah. So Bill Hader is in it, and they 
all of them really say nothing. When I tell you Jason Sudeikis, all he does is comes out and break dances in a jumpsuit and some Adidas. It will blow your mind. So when you're giving nothing and you become the star of it, that's how you steal the show. And that's always what I wanted to see from LWO, but they've never done that. They it's just because it's always been focused, like I said, Rey Mysterio, bringing Carlito back. I think Carlito, I hate the fact that a lot of us are still stuck on Attitude Era Carlito. Uh-huh. And, you know, people like, I just want the Apple. I just want his old music. I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. You know, again, evolution and growing up and developing. But let's just move on. We Again, Martin had to step aside for a second for those who are probably wondering where to go. He'll step aside for a second. When he drops back on, we'll have him back in. Uh, let's go right into it. The women's war game match. Yes. Man, they told some story, and I loved it. This match, they gave them about 40 minutes, it felt like to tell stories and the story of Becky and Charlotte coming full circle, the hug in the ring, mm-hmm. EO Scott saying, I'm the genius of the sky. God damn it. Let me show you what I'm going to do. But the biggest thing more than anything, of course, you know, team Bianca wins the match. The biggest thing for me is, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to bite my tongue and eat my words that I ate. Shotzi Blackheart, Shotzi, showed up and showed out she had me scared because of that friday night promo i was like oh shotzi what are you doing oh baby no <laughs> get out of here shotzi what are you what are you doing dude because i thought i really because again for those who follow me and and watch what we were saying last week and what i've been telling everybody michael cole keeps mentioning the four horsewomen it has been a thing he has consistently done the four horsewomen, four horse. And I was like, there's a reason you got to all of a sudden be mentioning them. So I was like, shots are getting taken out and we probably getting Sasha. But again, Triple H was like, I gave y'all three returns in one night. Can I save one? Okay, cool. But the story they told, Shotzi stepping. I was like, one point, I was like, this chick did knock herself out because I was like, God <laughs> damn, she's like this. <laughs> yeah, I like how you did that, brother. That was very smooth. Hey, you're going to pick it up right there. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. like, I thought she knocked herself out. Real talk. Yeah. I thought she knocked herself out. And I was like, oh, she loopy. But she continued on and did everything. Um, If you didn't tell a story, remember how we said last week, yeah, Bailey finna get her ass jumped about a damage control. Right? Yeah. They showed you Bailey finna get her, jumped ass, her ass jumped about a damage control. Because yeah. also, great storyteller. Great you story. Bailey's wrestling ability is unquestionable. There's, there's yes. no re- you can ever question that. Her storytelling on this level has been immaculate. She is telling such a great story as to when they jump her, you are going to be hurt for her. I'm done. You're right. I mean, because Bailey has been telling this story, she's been the glue that's been holding damage control together. She's been the one calling the play. She's been a person to fall on her sword for the squad. Last night she did it. She took a spear to save her teammate because she believed that much. And for them, when they do kick her out, which will probably be this Friday night on SmackDown, it's going to hurt because it's like, after all I did for y'all, you disloyal fool. She can go ahead and cut that Denzel watch the train today promo after this. After they jump up. Because it, it just it was you saw it coming. I, I will say it was good to see Kyrie Sane back in action. She was getting yeah. the WWP back under her, you know, to see that. Oscar did what Oscar does. They were so many. I love how the people kept chatting for the tables, and everybody was like, no, not yet. Like yeah. you still put it in everything. I'm gonna tell you this. This is my thought. I was gonna save this, uh, but I, I got I gotta give it to you now. This PLE was the most smackdown deficient survivor series I've ever seen. Their presence was barely if at all shown. How, how do you say that? This is how I say it. We had the one match with Santos, right? 
the damage control. Is all SmackDown. Huh? The women's war games match is all SmackDown minus Becky Lynch. Yes. You got a women's war games match, and then you had the Santos match. What other what other taste of SmackDown do you have? Okay. And then the other three are raw. All the other matches were raw that were powerful storylines. That's what I'm saying. With like Survivor Series, when you got red versus blue, it's supposed to be red versus blue. Well, I think, yeah, I, I thought, I think we all thought that's what it was building to when you brought in Nick Aldis as the GM of SmackDown. And that's what I mean. It was a letdown. I wasn't, I didn't feel SmackDown was represented at all. Like this damage control as well as, um, yes, with the only incorporation of Becky Lynch. It's a great women's match, but it wasn't a brand thing. This was just a women's match. Every other match was a but raw match. match. Is, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so in that regard, okay, I I guess what you I get what you're saying. But I even the like, men's match was all raw. It's like I didn't yeah. see any of the other storylines that have been uh, watered in the, in the Survivor Series pay per view at all. I think the problem is. Um, and again, let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, when you guys are watching this, listening to it, let me know if I'm mm -hmm. wrong. I think if we just started adding in more storylines, like I know a lot of people were like, Yeah, give us a traditional Survivor Series match, right? Yes, here's my issue with that. Okay, I think if we got in a traditional Survivor Series match, mm -hmm. number one, if it's not 15 minutes at least, it's everybody's cheated because it's going to be hurried and rushed, right. So is it 15 minutes in the ring, 15 minutes including introductions? How does that go? How does that extend the show? And I think that's the big thing about, like, do you want to extend the show? Yes, this is one of the big five now, six, whatever they're calling it. Mm -hmm. you, you should be able to, but do you want to? Now, here's the thing. With that question raised, I'm willing to cut two matches to make space. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to justify why I'm cutting these matches. Not that there wasn't a great match between Rhea and Zoe, but it was unnecessary to the overall storyline. And what do I mean? Rhea Ripley is a bona fide star. However, Rhea Ripley, her presence was more appreciated in seeing her involvement at the very end of the men's the match, match. Yeah. where you see her come down with the briefcase because it was like, oh, this is brilliant. This is part of Priest's plan because the Judgment Day move as a unit to where I felt that the Zoe and Rhea match, although it delivered, took a back seat because everything else was going on. They're like, oh, yeah, uh, Rhea, Zoe, y'all have a match as well coming up in Survivor Series. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dealing with all this stuff and I'm dealing with that. And they built their storyline off of Rhea being pulled in so many directions. And I felt that was lazy because we didn't need that match there as more as much as we could have used that match at a Royal Rumble or as we could have used that match as whatever the next pay-per-view for December will be. Because when you have Rhea Ripley, well, they, said, they, they did say this was like the last one. Oh, so this is the last one until Royal Rumble. I think this is what he said. This is the last PLE to the Royal Rumble. And that's fine. But if that's the case, we definitely didn't need that match right here then. Because you could have used another month to build that storyline and built the uh, the the frustration and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Tension. You could have used that to build the tension and frustration with Rhea versus Zoe to come at Royal Rumble then to just throw in the Survivor Series. We know that Rhea's going to win and then she comes out towards the end. I agree. I think um I think and of course Santos match gets cut just so we can have a traditional Survivor, Survivor Series match. I agree with that part. And or make this the war games match elimination. Now we got the best of both worlds. Yeah, I think they should have done that. Yes. But I think it would have been kind of they could have done it. Yeah, I believe they could have done it. Because look um, at it. Like when you look at the match, you look at war games and you look at this, these are the rules of war games. People are released in 15 second increments, right? And then it's like a minute and a half, kind of like the Royal Rumble or Elimination Chamber. And as soon as all competitors are inside the ring, that's when the match begins. So technically, it's the shortest match possible if we're thinking about when it begins, because that match didn't truly begin until Randy Orton's music hit and he came to the actual ring, ring and closed yeah. the gates. So if you would have had it to where the match started then <laughs> and or that part i get what you're saying though but if you could have had it to where the match just starts because now i'm more invested in war games if it goes like this soon as two competitors are in the ring that's when the match starts 
no matter who has the advantage, right? So if the if the match starts right then and you're able to eliminate people, by the time Randy Orton comes at the very end and there's a minute left, Ooh. you're showing me now there might be two members left that are on the brink of just being like, I can't fight anymore. Randy comes in, starts hitting RKOs because what it looked like when I saw that men's war games match was now, okay, everybody's around to hit their finishers, but there's a lot of people with nothing to do. They're just standing around. Yeah, so if you would have had people be eliminated, it would have been an even bigger impact. Do you think, let me piggyback off this. I like, first of all, I like that. Okay. Thank you. So I've been saying. Piggyback, allow, allow me to piggyback and just, because I know I'm, I'm ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try to get to AEW, but I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure we're going to be able to, I'm not committed to that. Um, whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Um, <laughs> And your boy is not here to stop it. So we got to have nobody to do it. It's kind of true. Um, I like your idea with the work with the two soon as the two competitors start. Yeah. The match starts, right? Yes. And the entry, you have the entry comes in, comes the entrance come in, the war games count, counter style, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. But what if you don't allow the eliminations until all 10 have been in? Because now, once all 10 are in, you run, you open yourself up to finish, 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 finish. I too much because too then, much. from what you're just saying, you're keeping war games as it is. And now, elimination start. It's like, nah, it's got to be, you're still telling a story. So, if you're well, telling no, I, a story, I mean, you, run, you run it looking like there can be a, uh, yeah, fuck. Okay. Yeah, you're telling a story. It's like, if you have, because look at what war games is. If now every every 15 seconds somebody comes in, people are exhausted after another person comes in just to save right. them. So if you're let's say you come in, there are two of your teammates inside, but they getting wrecked by three other people. Now you come in to even a score. Y'all both have two more people to come out on each side. And then you get in. As soon as you get in. One of those dudes get eliminated. And you're like, damn, now it's only two of us. And we don't know who's about to come out of the cage next. And then uh, the opposing team comes out next. They're beating y'all down. Then they eliminate one of y'all. Now it's just one of y'all. And you get eliminated. Now there's still only two people left on your team that can make a difference. And they go on a frenzy. Bam, RKO. Bam, RKO. Bam, RKO. He's eliminated two out of the three. And now he gets eliminated. And now the last dude out of the cage has to beat four people. That's yeah. the story. That's why I always love Survivor Series five on five match. But with the cage and being able to be released in 15 second increments, it makes it better if you just have people be eliminated. Yeah, you got a point. Damn, One fall that. matches. I'm like, this is kind of this is kind of cheap because everybody's in the ring for the for the hands up, which is great. But this is, you know. No, I get it. Let's 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 real quick. Let's transition. Thoughts of that match. Since we're okay. Thoughts of that match, I felt like uh, there were some moments that definitely seasoned the future. Like, we know we're about to see a Damian Priest versus Drew McIntyre feud. I love it. I look forward to it. Which, that was by a big way, moment. Let me say this real quick for all the fans so I can acknowledge this. Drew McIntyre stormed out the cage, and everybody keeps seeing the clip that went viral of the television, of the camera guy telling him to go. The camera guys are always telling them to go. I don't know if y'all know this. Camera guys are always in their faces with the cameras like, all right, in three, two, one, we're out. That always happens, just so people know. But the Drew McIntyre storming out was not due to Seth Rollins. It was due to his team losing the match. And Martin has returned. So there you go. Nice. Thank hey, you guys. Coming, yeah, thank, no worries, thank you. Sir. Yeah. No worries. No worries. So, but go ahead. I'm sorry. You said we see Drew McIntyre. And Damian Priest in the thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, That's I feel nice. like the seeds were already sown. We're going to see Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest. Um, the, another moment that I love from that match was, of course, the back-to-back -back finishers. The choreography on that was incredible. The moments were high. Like, we see, bam, an RKO, a halluva kick. We see the splash. We see the, uh, the uh, crossroads. We see the stomp. These were all a great sequence. And then, of course, we see the super RKO off the top Ooh. of the cage. That was a great moment. Kudo, kudos favorite? to JD. Kudos to JD McDonough for taking that. JD, oh, my goodness. You know, Finn Balor's little brother twin is great. Seeing the cash-in moment 
be ruined by Randy's return music was an incredible moment for me because seeing Randy Orton look better than we've seen him look in a decade was crazy. Glad he cut the mustache off. Then to see, because he looked like he was, I was like, is he Latino when I, when I saw him last time? But he looked like a goddamn gigolo with that mustache. He did look like a gigolo. But when you saw those moments, those were great. And then I will say this, the moment that we saw CM Punk return, it was, I had to say, Jay Washington was spot on for this because we saw the Survivor Series tag go at the bottom and then you hear that music hit. And I was like, Jay Washington said this would happen exactly as it did. So I'm giving you my own round of applause for the Thank way you, you called that. Yeah, yeah, because was, that was the only way you bring him back without putting it, without like, yo, he doesn't have a direct, we know where it's going. We've all right. seen, we see it. We look the the best. I think everybody's seen the Seth Rollins outside the cage, like fuck you, fuck you. But yep. the best one is the Seth Rollins in the cage where this nigga's music hits and he throws the belt. He's like, oh, what the, did you see that one? No, yeah, there's from one uh, with the, the Ro- Romero. Yeah, yeah, send this to the group. Mike Why ain't y'all send it? Oh, I thought okay, I'm sending it. It's Mike Rose. He, <laughs> you see Seth throw that motherfucking belt. He's like, man, fuck this. Michael, <laughs> there's one of Michael Cole. There's one of a Michael Cole, somebody in the crowd was like, Michael Cole was like, good night. And then that music hits and you see Michael Cole arm go, fuck. <laughs> like he was. But no, so then they showed, they, they showed, they did show Michael Cole kind of vibing out to the music a little bit. So I think Cole was cool with it until he saw. Seth was know. mad. Yeah. <laughs> so also. Send these to the group, bro. Always send I'm these not, videos to right the group. Now. So also it was just, it was brought up too, by the way. So for those who do not know that the competitors of the war games match that we all know again i say pull we'll pull the curtain back a little bit we know storylines etc cetera, etc cetera. but there is a little bit of heat but everybody in the war games match was told about 10 minutes before the match started uh and it is match the punk's coming out y'all have a good one like what they say punk they said triple h took over production during the last five minutes and told yeah. them go Cleared put everybody up everybody out put the end card up and was like, have CM Punk's music cued. And I'm sure the people in the production truck were like, I'm sorry, have what? Have what queued up? Triple H is a storyteller, bro. He's the game for a reason. He just made this Monday Night Raw be one of the most highly anticipated Raws of all Who time. Who yeah. opens it? Who opens Who it? Opens Raw? I-, I would have Orton open and CM Punk close it. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah. The only thing that you missed. Go ahead. Go ahead. How? Because I think no, they're in Nashville, so it's a fairground, right? Mm-hmm. Problem is, if Orton comes out, do the Orton does Orton's promo get overwhelmed by CM Punk chance, or do you yes. let the Punk chance go out the way, get it out the way first, then bring Orton? Like because it's or and bring Rollins because it's going to be interesting who goes first in the. How do you kick this show off? I feel like this is what happens, bro. I love that Martin called it that Orton opens. I feel like Seth opens, brings out Randy. Or here's what's going to happen. The CM Punk's chants are going to happen no matter what. If the right. if the chants start as soon as they go live, I feel like if it's Randy's music, the crowd will stop chanting CM Punk because they respect Randy. They respect and Randy. then he brings out Cody. Soon as he brings out Cody, Cody talks a little bit. Then Seth comes out later that night, and I think that's when I don't know, bro. I don't know. Here, here, here's how I'd do it. I'd, I'd bring out Orton first. There, people love and respect Orton enough. There, even last night, you saw when people were kind of chanting CM Punk or doing whatever. As soon as Orton, as soon as that music hit, switched. Yep. It, it, different game right because yep. that's that's how long orton has been in it that's how much people love and respect him um so you you know he's he's good as gold right yes i think the the last you, you can see him if cm punk wants to go off number one you you want that third hour to get a big pop you want that yes. to get a big rating cm punk's gonna do that uh and then i think if you assuming it's shinsuke, shinsuke who's gonna wrestle punk at rumble or whatever uh or whatever they plan to do with that maybe that's his first program 
have Punk start to talk, and then Shinsuke, boom, hits him Kinshasa, right? Just comes out, nails him, or even, you know, it seemed like no, it seemed like no one in Judgment Day had an issue with Punk because they didn't, you know, yeah, they the all get back like, like this, yeah. this y'all shit, y'all. <laughs> yeah, but Dominic he came like, back as nine. a as a as a face, so it's like we already yeah. know the unspoken and spoken politics of heels. Heels don't have problems with other heels. That's why the Judgment Day doesn't talk badly about Roman Reigns. They talk about the bloodline. They don't say anything bad about Roman. So when you see um, CM Punk come out, he's wearing white. He is a face. But then at the same time, we don't know that because the way Triple H brought him out, he didn't bring him. He brought him out neutrally. Yes, he did. Yeah. Let let the fans decide. And I think they made that choice. But here's here's the problem with that statement just a little bit. The fans were going to, first of all, it's Chicago. Shy Town. It's Chicago. It's punk. So the fans deciding, they were decided no matter what. The way I also was going to say real quick, that pop is in top 10, if not number one as of right now. His pop at Survivor Series beat his pop at his return to AEW. Absolutely. This is his home, though. This is WWE. It was a bigger audience, too. It's a way bigger. Yeah, you're right. Fair. But and also, it was at a pay per view. You know, it's 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 try. He's top ten. But I but I say all that to say was it was going to be crazy for him regardless, right? It was going to be there was not going to be jeers and boos and things like that. It was going to be love for him regardless when he came out that soon as he came out that thing, soon as he showed up. So that was the thing. Now, I think Punk plays the Punk will play what Punk has always played the tweener role until you need him to go fully one way or another because mm-hmm. the, again the seth rollins thing which i wanted to bring up so we talked about seth rollins and how the videos have shown seth was like mother i ain't ne- look i've known kobe years i ain't never seen him that pissed however a lot of things have come back now here's a recent i pulled up a clip i'm glad we're doing it virtual this way because i have a clip i want to play of play a it. recent interview that seth rollins did when play he it. talks about the possibility of play CM punk coming back i'm play. uh i'm a professional so like if you want to if we can work together we can work together things that happen outside of here that that is what it is you know but like he he uh he apologized um and and we mended fences and i'm all about like I don't write anybody off. I'm not like one of those guys that's like, no second chances. You do wrong by me. I hate you forever. <laughs> like, I'm not that stubborn. It's not that serious, yeah. man. Like, unless you do some real nasty stuff. But, like, you know, everybody makes mistakes. So, like, I'm all about, like, forgiveness, second chances, what, what have you. So, I, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You you know, I'll, I'll I'll forgive. Not always forget, but, you know, I'm willing to move forward. And so, he he was a big man about it, came forward and apologized. And we were able to work together. And it, I, I'm happy for that. So I want to I want to give a quick correction. So that is please, because please, podcast. that is about that was not, about, that about, Matt that was about Matt Riddle. That was about Matt Riddle, not about CM Punk. But, but he has had one. I thought that was because I saw it. I thought because I know he did do one. Say he would do business with him. So I apologize. For I think that, that was, that was Rome, Roman. Roman said he'd do business with him, whereas Seth Rollins said I think whenever I think it was last year's WrestleMania, uh, where he said go away, Phil, go away. So I think he legit. He was like, no, I don't like that guy. He's a jerk. Uh, when he was getting interviewed by Nick Houseman, shout out to Nick Houseman. Um, Again, I apologize. Yeah, I, that clip was, the clip I saw was on it was on social media. It was labeled as him talking about, and I had to realize that it was like him talking about punk. And I was like, "That's him talking about Riddle." Yeah, it's about Riddle. I apologize. But, uh, I want to make sure you had to control. No, him. but but I think the one the one thing that we can take away from that interview is him saying that he might not always forget, but he does. You know, he does give second chances. So I, I don't know how egregious whatever situation it was between. Uh, Punk and and Rollins, but listen, this is the WWE. We've seen Macho Man come back. We've seen Ultimate Warrior come back. Bruno San Martino, Jesse Ventura, uh, Hulk Hogan come back several times. Uh, you know, whenever this contract with with uh, AEW ends, I'm sure they'll end up wheeling Ric Flair back out. Uh, so you, you never say never. That's that's the purpose. I, I feel like comedy is the only place where people don't forgive. So <laughs> it's, it's very possible. It's very possible that they do end up working together, and but it's also possible that Rollins is like, "I'm gonna let me smack him in the face one good time, and then we can move on." They're gonna work Look. together because that's the only thing that makes sense. They, I mean, with Punk, there are a couple of people that you can have him work with, but I don't see him. Uh, 
I don't see him putting a lot of people over. I think he takes that title off Rollins, and I think he has maybe a cool match. You don't think he takes the title off Rollins? No. Here, here's here's what I would do. If if they have to have that match, if they have to remain in a WrestleMania, if you want to keep Seth Rollins happy, let Rollins turn heel on Punk in the main event. Low blow, whatever, and then he ends up beating Punk. All Punk wanted was a main event. He didn't want to That's win all the title. He main That's event. all he, he just, wants. Yeah. He just wanted to main event a WrestleMania. And for and you know that even even he was talking to shit in AEW, it was it was bitter. Like, dude, there's been plenty, you know, you know, when you like talk shit about an ex and you're like, nah, I just wanted, I just wanted I'm mad because I can't hit. Like it's it's bad. <laughs> that's what it is. That's, the, that's what it was for Puck. It's like, man, I bitch cross eye. How like you be like, what's wrong with you? Man, she don't want me no more. I'm just really upset. <laughs> exactly. That's what it is, man. Like he he talked about getting fired on his wedding day. He talked about, you know, this not working, that not working, him not being able to do this, that, the third. So that's honestly, I think that's what it's really about. He has that bitterness or had that bitterness. So of course he's gonna come back, especially with everything that happened in AEW. So the he doesn't he doesn't need another world title run. He doesn't need uh uh you know the 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 big money him versus this person, that person. Give him the main event him and Rollins, I still have Rollins go over. All right. So. I don't have Rollins going over because, and here's where it goes to the length of time. Rollins is the first of this new incarnation of the WWE world heavyweight champion. Rollins has held that title since June. Mm -hmm. It's over. We don't need two heavyweight champions who've held their titles a record amount number of times. I want this title off of his waist. Even if it's Punk winning the title to get cashed in on, I need this title off of Seth's waist. Seth is an amazing champion, but I need this off of his waist. I've said this a couple times, and I think I've said this in conversation to both of you all individually. The title is established. Yes, it's mm -hmm. it's an established world title now. Yes, it'd be a different story. You said we said June, right? Is when he got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If this had been SummerSlam when he dropped, that would have been a different thing, and you we'd have looked at that right. title kind of weird. We'd have been like, Ugh, uh. yeah. Even the Rumble, but here's the here's the biggest issue: the the title off of him. This is beautiful now because I, I said this too. Punk coming back changes a lot of potential dynamics for your WrestleMania. Yes. Because you mm. know, a mil again, Punk wants the main event. That is fine. But what is the bigger main event money? Is it CM Punk versus Seth Rollins or is it CM Punk versus Cody Rhodes? No. It's versus Seth Rollins. They have a better yep. story. Okay. I want I want Cody Cody Roman night one, Seth, uh, you, Punk night two. No no no, I no, no. I'll, reverse I'll, that. Seth Punk night one. Yeah, just still put them in as long as they're in. Punk's not getting the main main event. Cody's finishing the story is the main main event. You think you think they would give Seth Punk night two? Yeah. No. Bro. Bro, Seth Seth has done everything. For them, these past few years, he wrestled Logan he Paul did, last year. Hey, Mark, not because he, he didn't main event. He just <laughs> that's, he just that's my response to that's, everything. That's, that's what I'm saying. So if 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 you if I have to make Logan Paul look good, if I have to make Cody Rhodes look good the year before that, uh, you know the, all the quick matches with Brock, all this stuff. Why wouldn't you get like give 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 both of them? That moment. Because it's not Seth, even Seth, about he, even even Seth has said I have never officially made. He said I don't count that cash in. Yeah, he doesn't He's never count officially it. Yeah. Made a minute. So give so them. Does, does Punk make win them happy? Give them but y'all, no, no, he doesn't win the world. What y'all no. talking about is this is semantics because night one and night two, night two is Roman's night because that's the big money. If you show Roman on night one, I guarantee you viewer viewership will drop for night two I, I, you know what I, no, i'm gonna disagree with you on this one you can disagree, disagree with, with because with, I, here's why i'll go with martin on this one because of who we're talking about now i don't think you lose viewership you're talking about cm punk and seth rollins this is 
fuck, I hate it's the night one. It, it's a hell of it's an amplified Matt Hardy edge when they were at their heat when they no. were both Bone and Lita. No, yeah. this is bigger than that. And I'm ready because I want you to understand my ampli- point. I said amplified. Jesus fucking Christ, Martin. I didn't say like that it wasn't. This Martin did I thought, say that. I, I thought the face he made was like, nigga, no. I no, said no, no, no. Ampl- no, I just laughed. Because you, you use that heightened. So I say that to say, I said all that to say before everybody in the comments like, this nigga's stupid. You can still have the, you will still have the traction to go into night two. Listen. With them two. I'm not taking away your emphasis on what you think amplification means but i'm telling you that this match is way on another level than fucking edge and matt hardy this match is cm i don't give a fuck jack this match is cm punk and seth rollins this is massive however freaking rollins this is peak seth rollins and this is a little more over the heel punk. But my point is, you still want to see this match. This is not Roman and Cody. Where, And I'm talking about a story that we've had to Make see sure a storyline between. There's two. Yes, there's it's two. But two so, so we can Jack, accept it night one. No, you're not about to accept that shit night one. You want to see it yeah, night two. Will. Bro, because last Cody, year's WrestleMania, last year's WrestleMania sold out before a match was announced. I didn't before say that. a single match was announced. Guys, listen to what I'm saying. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns' story. The fact that both these niggas are looking away, I swear to God, I wish I were both in front of you right now. I will punch you both in your fucking chest. <laughs> Why are you so violent? See, I don't so know. Violent. I don't know. He's so See, aggressive. Him, Roman Reigns and Cody's match last this past WrestleMania was massive, but we all know it wasn't as what it could have been because Cody was gone since that previous September. So him coming back and winning the Rumble and him possibly winning the WrestleMania, we all hoped, but we all knew he hadn't been around that long. Whereas now he's been healthy for this whole year. He's going to WrestleMania. It looks good. The only difference is that that fucking tension has been built. So to see CM Punk come back five months before Mania, not even five. This is November, December, January, January February, February, March. Okay, so that'll be another five months. So to come back I mean, five yeah, months this, before you Mania. Yeah, basically five. You know what I mean? So to come back five months before Mania, we just have to rely off the storyline that they have and the rumors that we've heard outside of them being face to face. That's not a night to over Cody Roman and possibly LA night. It is. And you're wrong, but that's uh, where I concede. All right. Listen, yeah. I'll, I'll, look for the, for the argument that the three of us has had. I, I will say this. I like the points we all have made. Yeah. I, I think I... <laughs> Let me talk you to really... you. <laughs> Did you really know what I mean? What's I, everybody I, 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 saying? Hell, hey, night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the points we all have made. Either way, no matter what, we know that these two are the, these are the things. But let's go. We got to wrap it up because we've been doing this and it's way too much. So before we get up out of here, make sure you are following the Instagram. I think we're changing it. Did we change it officially, Martin? You will know well, that. We, when- we, I have to wait. I have to wait 14 more days to change it to before the bell. But right now it's still BBC Wrestling Pod. Now here's hey, the thing. Hey, Title of this episode, uh, Survivor Series Fallout. Because the title you came up with, Jay, was was a very interesting when I looked for it. It was trash. It's right here. It was trash. It's fine. How can they find you, Martin, trash. please? Hey, give me a find and a follow at Martin and Mauro on uh, Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, Martin Morrow Comedy over on OnlyFans. Now, is it just comedy over there? Yes. All right, cool. Why do you think he lost all that weight? There's more than comedy over there. There's more than comedy over there. He's slinging that thing. That's what he's doing over there. He don't want people to know about it. He's selling selling side of dick pics. (laughs) Holy fuck. He ain't even selling the straight out. He's selling side of dick pics. Wow. He got his dick planking put on places. He got his dick planking on the top of a microwave. I'm to find you. 
at CT is dope on everything. Thanks for watching the podcast. This is main event CT. Oh Lord Jesus! I already, you already know who I am. I'm Nervy Gladiator, Mister J Washington, all across the board. We're back next week. We don't know if we're here or we're together, but either way, we'll be back. Appreciate y'all. We out. Take care. Bye. Peace.